Hi guys, in this week's lesson I'm going to talk about how you can uh, use triads in your solo lines. To me, triads are one of the strongest melodic devices that I can use when I'm soloing, so I use it in all sorts of contexts. Uh, to spell out superimposed harmony or to spell out uh, the harmony that's really there in, in many different ways. Um, so in that way it's an important thing to check out and what I find is that most of the time uh, students only learn the diatonic triads in, uh, in the root position and not so much in the inversions. Uh, so in this lesson I'm just going to go over how you can practice your scales in the different inversions of uh, diatonic triads uh, and then I'm gonna make some lines for that to illustrate how I might use it. Um, I think practicing the triads in inversions is also a very handy thing for your theory because you need to be able to understand uh, for each triad what is the third or what is the fifth um, so you understand the structure uh, and the theory behind each uh, chord a little bit better. So for that is a good exercise too. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is just to go over um, the diatonic triads in the key of F um, and then in the different inversions too. Um, so let's get through that. So here's the first example. So that's basically just this position of the F major scale played in diatonic triads. So let's try and do the same, but then do first inversion triads. So that means that we're going to have the first one is going to be an F. Uh, so that would be the second example, and that sounds like this. So the third example is uh, playing the same scale, but then in uh, diatonic triads in the second inversion. So the first note we play is the fifth, so we get the fifth root third, in this case A, D, F in a D minor triad. That sounds like this. So that's the different inversions uh, through a position of the F major scale. Um, the reason why I pre prefer to often play stuff through a scale fingering is that when I'm improvising then the sort of the basic layout of what's going on is still going to be this uh, this fingering of, of for instance a major scale um, and that's sort of what I'm fitting everything else into. Uh, so it's nice to have this as a backdrop for, for any technical exercise that I'm working on. Uh, of course you can still just play the, the, the triad by itself in any position and just play that one and try and play it in, uh, in, in inversions too. That's, that's always a good exercise. But in this case it's also connecting it to um, sort of a harmonic environment, which is what you need to do when you're playing, for instance, a cadence like what we're going to do in the examples later. Um, so um, let's just um, go on to the examples. Well, may actually one thing first. So, the way you apply these triads, um, you might know how you construct chords that you stack up thirds, like if I have to build, um, in the case of this, this scale, if I have to build a G minor chord, then I'm going to stack up thirds within that scale, so it's going to be like G, B flat, D, F, and if I keep on going, A and C. Um, so, that's the process of building the chord and then adding the, the extensions that we have. Uh, and if you use that, then you can sort of just isolate, isolate three of them and then you'll have a triad. So if I have my G minor uh, 11 here, then of course it's a G minor triad, a B flat major triad, D minor, or F triad. So all these triads are going to sort of sound like a, a, a certain set of colors on top of my G minor chord. And they're gonna be, the higher I get, 
the more the further away they are from really sounding like the chord and sounding like only extensions which can cause you to make some really vague lines if you're only using the upper structure of the chord um, but maybe if that's what you want then that works really well too of course um, so that means that's how I'm gonna select the different uh, triads that I, I use um, so basically for every chord you, you're playing on I think you should at least check out using the, the just the triad of the chord itself and the one from the third and probably also the one from the fifth um, and then in some cases the one from the seventh is going to work really well too but then you can get into um, some less uh, clear lines of course but look, all, of this, all of these things are something that you need to sort of check out and get into your own system uh, and judge with your own ears I think so um, let's just look at uh, the three examples the first example sounds like this so basic uh, well actually also dominant so basic 251 in uh, F um, and the first thing I play well second inversion G minor triad uh, and uh, that fits very nicely to continue in a second inversion D minor triad and then for the C7 altered so since that's uh, the same as uh, D flat melodic minor I have an uh, G flat and an A flat major triad so that's what I'm playing there so I'm going up the the second inversion G flat and then going down second inversion A flat and then I'm resolving that to the C on the F and on the F I'm playing first an A minor triad and then again a D minor triad so one is like root position A minor second inversion D minor so the second example sounds like this simple again G minor triad second inversion B flat major uh, and on the C7 this time I'm using a C7 um, a C7 octatonic sound or diminished scale uh, so the first triad I'm playing is an A major triad then I'm running down uh, an E flat minor triad and then I'm resolving to the seventh on the on the F major seven um, and then I'm using that to play an, an A minor triad and following that up with an F major triad um, so you get and actually this way of chaining them like it's sort of a nice uh, a nice easy way to play them and you get really a big range in your line which is something that I like a lot um, okay let's look at the third example so this line um, again I'm a root position G minor triad. Actually, I use G minor in all my examples here. I see, um, and then I'm continuing with a D minor first inversion, then I'm doing this other way of chaining triads, which is um, for the C7 altered. I'm using first an E flat minor and then a that major and then I could have done this if I had the time but then I need to change the chord so I'm resolving to the 9 here so you get this sort of way of cascading the triads like I think that's a nice thing to check out actually sometimes you'll have these things where you can uh, chain the triads together the obvious way to do that would, have, would of course be to just um, 
sort of do or like a, in this case, a, a nine arpeggio in, in groups of, of, uh, of three, and that'll by itself become different triads you're playing. Uh, this one is another one, so. look for those kind of things because I, I like the way they move uh, together, it sounds sort of familiar. You're using that the triad is a strong melody and at the same time you're also uh, trying to make it a little bit surprising how it moves from one to the next one. Um, yeah, so resolving to the 9, which I'm then turning into a first inversion C major triad, which is the triad from the 5th on the, on the F major 7. Um, and then I'm going back to my D minor second inversion before I'm resolving to the seventh on the F major seven. I think you can see that certain things are sort of very obvious to use when you're in this position, uh, which the, the second inversion for some reason of this D minor is like all over the place. Um, but for the rest, there's nothing else really sort of. Op uh, that I need to mention about that, I guess. So that was three examples uh, on how I might uh, use triads in my solo lines and how I try to com come up with new ideas uh, using them in uh, inversions. I think the point of this is, of course, just that you need to check out your inversions and try and use them also so you have... Basically, you have three different triads whenever you know one triad, um, melodically anyway, uh, when you have that in your system and you have that as part of your vocabulary. Uh, another thing maybe for another lesson to check out is like all the different patterns you can play through a scale uh, with a triad or with a triad inversion. Um, but uh, that's going to be another week, I think. Um, I hope you can use it. In any case, uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the lesson, then uh, feel free to like it uh, here on YouTube uh, or subscribe to my channel. Uh, of course, you can go to my website uh, where I have a PDF of the lines and also the scale exercises that you can download. Um, and you can also subscribe to my newsletter there if you want to uh, stay up to date whenever I make a new lesson or if there's a new release or something else happening. Um, if you have any comments, you can of course leave them here on the video. And you can also uh, connect with me on uh, Facebook or Twitter or uh, Instagram or Google+. Plus. If you have any questions or any remarks, also if you have suggestions for uh, things I should do uh, lessons on. Uh, so, um, until next week, thank you for watching. <laughs>